All right. Hello, guys. Hopefully you're having a wonderful day. I'm going to have a little bit of a YouTube video where I'm going to be going over things and reviewing it today for you. Um, Starting off, I'd recommend you guys choose whatever opener you feel most comfortable with. I usually recommend um something that neutral that isn't like a prismatic or something that will make your games very hard. And the reason why I say that is because some people just high roll. Like, some people just get ridiculously good openers. And when you start getting to be higher and higher elo, people run with leads that you just can't ever deal with. Like, if I get hedge fund on, what is this, like, 1-1 one, one, one or whatever it is, and to level up on 3-2, I just auto win the game, right? So that's why I try to stay away from prismatic lobbies. The variance is too much, and I like to just believe it or not play with as much skill as i possibly can so crushing uh cleaning out team planner that way we have a fresh mental coming into the game and we're going to be buying pairs where we can and i'm seeing a little bit of a sniper opener i may be thinking reroll um cogma so i'm gonna go over this with you guys today usually so starting off healing orbs is always decent it will always be a good combat augment throughout the course of the game um silver veil is another good one with the amount of cc right now that's prevalent in the meta being lissandra being one and nautilus being another just two to list silver veil is actually really good throughout the course of the game um it also gives you base level attack speed in the early game right now you won't appreciate it as much um healing orbs you will appreciate more in the early game but late game silver veil when you have a much more flesh out board will be much better you're going to see me refresh the healing orbs I'd recommend you guys on 2-1 choosing augments that are econ-oriented, right? So we're going to want to start getting ourselves to where we got to get going. We're not necessarily going to care too much about combat on 2-1, right? Because usually you want to view 2-1 as we're trying to find out our pathway of where we want to get going, right? We want to start figuring out a direction, get some gold under our belt, things like that, right? So we're going to refresh healing orbs here and probably the other two. So late in Forge after a player combats given artifact anvil. I think this is pretty good, especially because considering guys, this is just a gray augment. You know, these usually won't make or break the game. For you, I mean it's 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 okay, but it's not like a gold combat augment or you know a prismatic or something like that. This is just like a little um quality of life thing. So the Artifact Anvil isn't the worst. I think it's decent. All the other options are trash. Good for something one. Champions that aren't holding items have a 40% chance to drop one gold on death. Now, I don't think this is too bad. I just don't know really... 40% 40% isn't too much. That means less than half the time as your units die. And usually this means you're going to want a power level on off intervals and uh, or a completely open fort here. Like, um, you're going to want to just have your three units out there and try to make 10 gold and lose streak all of stage two and, like, just throw out an extra shitter where you can and try to get some free gold. Um, Because you're not going to be slamming items, right? Because that's counterintuitive. Or you just pick it and then forget about it and just hopefully high roll. Or we have Caretaker Allies, gain a random two-cost champion now, gain the same one every time you level up. Now, this is really good, um, but I will say it railroads you. Um, on 2-1, you guys usually want to avoid things that are going to railroad you throughout the course of your game. But this is decent. I mean, worst comes to worst, this is the way you view it. Most games, you go to level 8, so um, you're going to at least gain you know a ton of free gold from it. Or level 9... And then you're going to be getting a free three star three cost, right? So there's that. Our three star uh, two cost. So we're going to go with Caretaker's Ally in this case. We're going to take the upgrades where we can. But I'm going to try to want to start figuring out how I can get the Zyra out onto the board here today, right? So we hit the Zyra upgrade. We're able to get out the bruiser front line. I don't think personally here would it matter whichever front line I got out onto the board. Um, you know, you just want to get you either want to get warden pair out or bruiser brawler pair out, and we're gonna be slamming rage blade on Zyra. I don't think it's the best item. Um, 
I just think it's decent. I don't know what Zyra's Giga Abyss is, and I don't know if the plant she spawns shares the same attack speed with her Rage Blade. I do not know that. But usually you can insinuate that she's going to want AP items. So right now, like, I would assume her best items are Sojin, Death Cap, and, like, Archangel. She has Grievous Wounds on her ability, so we don't have to worry about that the rest of the game. Meaning we can kind of tailor towards getting Giga Abyss, and we don't have to worry about utility items like Sunfire or Morello. We can kind of greed on our tank items and go more for, like, uh... Bramble, Declaw, Warmogs, or something like that, for example. And, um, with us getting this opener, we're gonna start trying to lead towards the Sage version. Now, there's a few versions you can play with the Sage. Uh, you can go the Powerpuff Girls version using Nico, Soraka, Riven, uh, Zyra, <clears throat> like Zoe, right? You can go high and wide. You can go vertical Story Weaver. The cool part about getting Zyra is... There's a lot of variations of Story Weaver you can play right now that aren't really forced upon and they aren't dominated. We also can um we can go the version where we have Silas as a carry. If you guys didn't know this right now, Silas as a four cost using the Sage Hexes, so you're gonna be back rowing them with Bruiser Frontline with like Riven or whatever. Um gaining the AP, he actually becomes a formidable carry, right? So here with the Bruiser, we could put out Garen or whatever, but it's not going to make a difference. You want to just get another unit out there that's going to gain the Bruiser bonus. And we're feeling kind of bad right now because we don't have too much of a vertical synergy set up versus like you look over at this guy's board, he's like, oh God, this guy's bedazzled. He's like living large. So we're going to lose our streak here, which isn't feeling the best. Um, I don't know if I showed it here yet, but Exalted kind of does line up with what we're doing here today. And you're going to see we're going to be making tough decisions here today, boys. Dropping the bruiser here doesn't feel the best. But we do a little bit of retacking in. We're trying to, we're trying to pre always present strongest board, guys. Remember that. When you're playing the game, you're always going to want to be presenting the strongest board, even if you've got to wiggle around some things, right? So this guy just straight up took our lunch money. So we just took, we're starting to take some big damage losses, but it's okay. We're at five Zyras. We only need nine. When we go six, we'll gain another one. When we go seven, we'll gain another one, so on and so forth. So we're coming up on a free three-star, three-cost Zyra. And I'm looking over at the Exalted. I see I need Yorick or something else, but I feel like I'll be able to get it out there. Because usually the earlier you get Exalted out there, the better, because every goal, every turn you, or every combat you do, you're basically gaining one gold. And then on top of that... uh. Every combat, you gain a natural 2 XP, so you're basically gaining 3 XP every turn. We see the Annie, and I'm going to start teching that out there onto the board. We're going to go with the AP version of Kale, and that way we can give Zyra some um, AP. We're not going to slam the extra tier, because this extra tier can be a few things. It could be Sojin, it could be um, Adaptive Helm, it could be um, Redemption. <laughs> Knight's Vow, there's a lot of good things this tier can be, but we don't want to commit it to any one unit, right? Because the 15 mana provides really ain't going to make or break us here today. 3-2 is standard leveling, so we'll level up. So now gold augments tend to matter a bit more. And so when we come into this with the notion of now we're already kind of know what we're going to play. I already know the Exalted, and we know that we're going to basically be playing Sage, Story Weaver, Zyra Carey uh dragon lord type stuff you know it's it's kind of like the cover we're gonna be playing is like the old one with uh janna reroll but we're not going to be focusing on janna here today right because usually we're not going to want to be chilling lower tiers and rerolling we're just going to be pumping xp where we can so we can finally get the exalted bonus on and go up and get legendaries on on our board on level 9 or 10. so we have epoch at the start of every stage gain 8 xp and 3 rerolls for that round only I think it's a really good tempo thing. Um, I think this is really good for fast aiding because after you're done with stage three, it gives you that eight XP and three rerolls, so you can hit your eight, uh, four cost, two, four star, two cost, whatever, f two star, four cost. There we go. Whatever you're looking for. We have healing orbs. 
I think healing orbs is decent, but guys, it has to be on comps that really want it. Like Yone reroll when that was prevalent, Duelist reroll when that was prevalent. Right now, it'd be like the Kane Lee Sin comp if you really wanted to take that. Keepers is always going to be decent, but that's really good on the Heavenly or Duelist comps, right? So sleight of hand, um, this is already good if we already had a thieves gloves and like a uh, and then another crit glove on our bench or something like that. Jewel lotus will always just be good crit chance since we have our Zyra, it'll buffer a bit more. But I think I'm gonna take keepers here, and I'll tell you why. Usually with sage, you gain all the bonuses where you want it. Usually for AP or whatever, and we're able to stack up our units into the corner quite a bit with the kale already. And we basically, the Kale gives the bonus on top of it. So we have an extra plus one unit that's going to gain a, give another 260 health shield to the surrounding units. So I think Keepers will be really good. Um, and I, I don't think there's too many Nautilus players this game. So I don't think it'd be too bad having us all stacked up in the corner. So 3-2, we're going to level up like usual. We got another free Zyra. Now this is what I mean by presenting strongest board. You know, some people might throw out the York or another frontline unit. We're just going to put out another Zyra 2 and see what happens on these kids. This guy's got the Forbidden D-Claw. Annie, Annie 1, Annie 2, dude. She's, she's a beast of a unit. I would recommend you guys just always throw her out on your board. She's probably the best for cost in the entire game for frontlining right now. Get the Zoe out there. Now we're starting to see the stars align on the left-hand side. We know that when we put, if we get a lot, we put it out there, we're going to get the Arcana, some Warden, and then, um, you know, if, you, if you're brave enough, you could tech out the Fortune, but I ain't, I ain't about that life. Right now, we're about, all I care about is making gold and pressing that XP button. Getting a free Zyra 3, getting to our extra Sages. And Keepers seems to be like a really busted augment, guys. The biggest thing that Keepers does is it holds the door like in Game of Thrones, and uh, it provides time to let our Zyra ramp up with that Rage Blade. There was no other good tank component here. Here we're like looking for like a Chain Vest or like a um, Negatron Cloak, that way we can start getting resistances on our Diana. Usually, um, if you guys sold this Diana here and put the items on Annie, I wouldn't blame you. But I feel like it's super easy to hit a 2-star Diana. And 2-star, 3-star Diana, no difference, man. It's really about the same. Yeah, and they're holding the door all right, dude. Zyra's doing the thing. So, I don't know what these are, guys. It's just up to you. I'm assuming magic is AP. One's tank, and then one's... AD damage, you know, is what it is. Now here, I decided to take the Zyra 2 off the board. You could argue that having um two 2-star two Zyra is better, but I just think with the Ward and the Arcanus, maybe it just rounds out the board a bit better. I don't think it would have mattered what the third AP item here was on Zyra, guys. You just, you know, if you want to, if you want one little bit good, like one little bit of advice is finish out your third slot on your carries man like don't be just put in items and components where you think willy-nilly will be best really try to commit to finishing out the third item slot that way you can move on and present your strongest board zyra without you know she, she's probably still just as strong without it but it's the little um icing on the cake that kills more units prevents you from taking fatter losses right so we're gonna slam the thieves glows on annie and then I'm really torn about where to put this uh, gun blade right now. And the biggest thing is about is stacking up keepers, guys, is to gain the most amount of value you can from it. And we're going to keep above 50 gold. Here on 4-1, guys, is where people YOLO for their 2-star 4 costs. So I know I'm going to be taking some fat losses here now. People are going to be rolling. You see this guy has like a Annie 2, Kaisa 1. Like this guy's 20 gold. He spent his whole paycheck. And then we're coming here into the augments. And lo and behold, guys, it's the worst thing you can possibly see in the game. So it's 4-2. We're 77 HP. We're actually in a really good spot. If we just pilot the game right, we don't overroll. 
we get out our upgrades, we're probably going to top four. A prismatic is about the only thing that can throw your game through a loop, right? So, accomplice, really good. It's a thieves' gloves. Um, the issue is with keepers, it's hard to position, and you gain four gold. It's decent, right? It's a really big power spiking item. So, something to think about if you really need to preserve a streak. Um, it's decent, right? Edge fund plus. Now, if we weren't rocking Zyra, and we just we had a decently strong board here and we weren't forcing an avenue. There's a world where you take hedge fun, you just push level nine and you just go for the whole legendary board with Azir, Huey, Soraka, Janna, Orin, Udyr, uh, Wukong. And then th th that'd be the board you go for for hedge fun plus. I mean, but that's a YOLO. What you guys also have to consider is prismatic combat augments are huge. These, it's so huge. It, it will make you go from these combats that you're winning to just losing. The one that makes you 50% smaller and attack 30% faster is busted. So we're going to be refreshing the econ augments here because we're already kind of rich, rich. Like, we're, we're, ch we're J-chilling. Infernal Contract, we are never taken here. I am already going to hit Zyra 3. That is a Jabate, which I, you don't want to accidentally click that shit. Final Ascension is booty. Somebody at that company needs to do something with Ascension. I'd recommend they don't got to change the percentages, but they got to bring down the time, man. The amount of combats that are already done, like the combats are done. You know, Lissandra ain't casting five times before the fight's done for 15 seconds to pass by. She's casting twice in the first two seconds and the, and the fight's decided. Kaisa does two rotations with her, with her spell and the fight's done. This needs to get like nerfed. This needs to be like 10 seconds. Actually make people clench in their cheat, like seat when they're playing this. So we're left with cybernetics, which is big. We're just going to go with the HP because we already got the keepers. We're just going to be buying time for the Zyra. We're going to level up here. See if we can hit the Zyra 2 after we pump some a a a uh, XP. We sold a Lissandra here, which hurts, boys. It, it hurts my soul. We were able to get the Morgana out there. We are able to get the Exalted. Now we're just chilling. And I'm probably going to be going level 10. We already got all the units we want. We're just going to be holding pairs where the game gives us some. Maybe we roll a little bit more for an upgrade. But beyond that, we're just chilling now. The big thing about us chilling here, though, is every turn, we're getting one more gold towards where we got to get going. Diana 3 is out of the question now. And you want to start looking at your board now. So out of, we're level 8. This is how you guys got to view it. We're level 8, and we have 1, 2, 3... Well, quit moving around shit. We got one, two, three, four, five units out of eight leveled up. So more than half of our board is upgraded. We're at 77 HP. We're leading the lobby in HP. So we're pretty healthy. I don't have to really roll any more gold, guys. So right now is where you want to start saving up your bankroll and start pushing like level nine. Start pushing level 10. We're not going for a three star four cost. So... You really kind of want to start teching legendaries out there where you can get it. Selling Lissandra here was a blunder because we have cybernetic bulk and we could have farmed components for ourselves to get more cybernetic bulk out onto the board. We hit the Zyra, which was big. And then since we hit it now, we're chilling. You know, in my head, I was already telling myself, oh, I just need to go level nine here. I get the free Zyra three and we get to get another legendary, legendary out on the board. Our board is really strong right now. Because just look at this vertical, man. And I don't think anybody else is using Exalted. Now, if you guys want a rule of thumb of like wing cons in the game to get first place that you can look out for, there's going level 9, level 10 for legendaries. 3 star 4 cost is another um, wing con. Or re-rolling a lot in lower tiers. We're just going to take all here because we're not going to get better than this. This is what I meant by finish out items. I could have got more cybernetic bulk out on these other units, guys. Like uh, Zoe, Janna, Garen. But finishing off the item slots here on the main key units is just huge. Finishing off Morgana, finishing off Di Diana. We will, coming into these chickens or whatever, be able to get some more item components out there. For right now, our team's got to get to doing what it's doing. And that's taking lunch money. All right. And now we're just going to start saving up our bankroll. We're not going to be pressing the refresh button. Nothing like that. We're chilling. We already hit the anti 2 Our whole board's basically upgraded besides Janna. So we start using our team planner for what we're looking for. So 
So after five one guys, you won't get any more components. So that's why I finished off the item on Alawi here. And then we just put the component on Janna. And then we're basically going to be filling in whatever um, items sl like slots left on um, Alawi here. And then we'll be teching in legendaries, which we'll, then we'll, that's where we're going to be slamming our items, right? So the games, we're looking like we're in a really good spot here. We're five streak and we got the exalted. And the big thing is, I'm at 77 HP, guys. There's too many games where people get antsy, where they start taking big losses or something like this. Hit your level 9, hit your level 10, eat your fruits and vegetables, get your protein in for the day, glasses of water, 8 hours of sleep, things like that. And we just got to sl slowly keep clicking that XP button and really start focusing on positioning, guys. It's really easy now to like go crack a cold one and go chill and not pay attention to what you're doing. And if you guys are losing combats and your board is strong, start pres like thinking about why you're losing the combats. So we have the wiggle room with the HP to say, oh, if we lost a so-and-so, is it because their chicken Caesar salad wrapping on our board in a little way? Or um, is it a positioning difference? Do I need to roll for something to make it like, should I start holding on to Annie's here? Go for a three-star four-cost Annie. The issue is, is unless you're playing like a really bad... Um, four costs you're never going to be able to hit it out of the pool like you might be able to hold morganas but like a lot of the other units like orn or like cinder is another good example these units like annie you're never going to find all you're never going to find because there's not too many good tanks right now especially with the ash comp being so prevalent it'd be really hard to hit a three star four cost on one of those comps right four five is the standard interval for level eight Level 9 is usually, I think it's like 5-5 five, five or, you know, um, you know maybe 5-1 or something like that. So we level up. We're able to get the Lissandra out there. Now we're looking good. I mean, all of our boards upgraded except for um, just Lissandra and Morgana. I'm not sweating the Morgana. Morgana 1, Morgana 2, no difference. But the biggest thing now is we're going to get the Lissandra to start farming items for us here today, hopefully. The components to be able to get more cybernetic bulk value out on the board, which it did. Issue is it's a crap tank item, but is what it is. We put on the Lissandra because one, I want more HP on her so she can cast. Feels really bad though. And the reason why we move our Alawi over one hex here is we want to gain more gargoyle stone value. You, you're going to see there's going to be always more units off to the right of her then off to the left, so she's going to be able to gain more armor and magic resist that way, and start Ionic Spark shredding on the board for us. It doesn't matter, though, because we have Static Shiv on Zyra. But we're sitting good, though, right now. We're going to be forcing level 10 here. Start looking at some of these other boards, like, Zeesh. Keepers and Bulk here is really popping off. And I didn't expect Zyra to be doing that much damage. I guess we're just, because we're buying so much time for the Archangels to stack. Uh, we're just going to be going for another AP item on Lissandra because the unit has to die in like her um, teapot or whatever she uses to be able to get a component. So we're just going to be stacking her. Because eventually, um, we really don't have too many item slots left to fill out on these units. So with her farming us components and stuff like that, before you know it, her whole board is going to be bedazzled. Yep, there's another component. Slam it on the Zoe mid-fight to gain the HP, which is big. And we're going to force 9 here. That way we can um just try to kill this guy in like two combats. I didn't realize this and before I rolled. And since we were already strong enough, we should have looked over at this guy's board and realized he was rolling for Kane 3. The only way we lose this game. So we really should have probably chilled level 9. Because now look, he's like 50 gold. And he's got four canes, so he's 50 gold plus. And he just won a combat, so I was like, oh shit, I just all in my gold with 77 HP, which is a blunder. You guys shouldn't do what I just did. Um, when you have that much HP, you really should stretch out your gold. Because all this game really is is a resource management game, right? So us all in all of our gold here, and without having Lissandra 2, which is another 10 gold. You know, Wukong 2, which is another 10 gold. It's a really bad move to do. Because cause now he can slow roll for Kane, especially if he keeps winning these combats and went out, right? And it looks like he's going to beat us again for another fight. Nope. 
So we got a hope on carousel. There isn't a cane for him to grab. There's a heavenly spat, which is closer to him, which is very bad for us. We're just going to grab another tank item here today. And we're just going to keep donkey rolling for the canes, trying to deny him. And you're going to see it. He keeps positioning cane off to the right-hand side. And the biggest unit that we can help get on as Grill is the Annie. So you put the Annie back one hex. So that way she'll have to walk out and right around the Alawi. So that way she can hold the door against the cane. And then uh, we can win this fight, which is big. And then I don't think he expected to get 20 owed here is why we won, guys. But yeah, as you can see, he had 20 HP left and he had 6 canes and he had 50 gold. I just don't think he expected to get 20 owed here. Hopefully you guys learned something and hopefully you have a wonderful day, guys.